Hi everyone, welcome to Chris works his way through his review obligations from Origins and today we're talking about Sobek by Pandasaurus Games and let me be right up front and say that I am a huge fan of Pandasaurus Games. I, I really like everything that they have been doing. I think the quality of game with the price point that they're usually able to offer on their games is second to none, really. And Sobek is no different. Sobek for Two is by two designers, Bruno Cathala and Sébastien Pochon. And you may know Bruno Cathala from King Domino. And if you're familiar with King Domino, then the scoring in this game might seem familiar as well. Basically, you're going to have a six by six grid. Yeah, I just had to pause to count that it was six by six. A six by six grid filled with tiles of various types. There'll be hay, there'll be fish, there'll be diamonds, there'll be crocodiles, everything that you would expect to see at a Sobek market. There'll be characters that are just laying face down on their belly so you don't know what character they are until you rip them up from the ground and stick them into your own hand of tiles, ready to use their ability for later, to push them back into the market and say, get to work, you laze about, and produce something for me. I want to have more points than my competitor. And the point of the game is going to be to collect those sets of tiles and to sell them, to commit to them. That's one of the actions you can do on your turns, laying down tiles in front of you and saying, yes, I've committed to this set of tile and it's going to be worth points at the end of the game. For those of you who are familiar with King Domino, each tile may have a certain number of symbols on them, these little scarabs, and the points that you get for these sets of tiles at the end of the game are the number of scarabs times the number of tiles. So if you had two scarabs on one tile and three tiles, those all together would be worth six points at the end of the game. So on your turn, you can play a character you can play a set of tiles, or you can collect a tile from the board. Now there will be this little onk symbol with, that's pointing at two different tiles, and you are only legally allowed to take those two tiles and put them into your hand, one of the two tiles, and put them into your hand. But if you want something a little further down the row, further down the market way, you can push those other tiles out of the way, put them into your corruption pile, and go take the tile that you really want that's further down the line. And there's a cost to this too, because if you have a whole bunch of corruption at the end of the game and your competitor doesn't, well, they're gonna get a chance to get a whole bunch more points. But that's basically the game. You're gonna go through a stack of tiles. Once you cannot draw anything on the board, you refill the entire market and start again from the middle. When you can no longer take an action, so you can't take tiles on the board, you don't have a legal set of tiles to play from your hand, and you have no more character tiles to use for their ability, then the game is over. You count up your points that you've had with tiles and any bonuses, and you see who wins. And this is a good game. This is a fun game. This is a game that I played, when I played it for the first time, I thought, oh man. This is gonna kill King Domino for me because it's more tactical than King Domino. It's a real head-to-head -head experience where you don't have to worry too much about the randomness of what tiles come up in what order. You can actively go out and get those tiles that you need. Or you can pick up a tile and move the Ankh onto its spot, which then orients the Ankh in a certain way, making your opponent have two horrible choices to choose from either making them do something else or take corruption to take something that's really good. And the, the, the idea of these tactical choices in this game are very exciting to me. The fact that your choice determines what options your opponent has to choose from on their next turn is really neat. I also like that you're racing to get sets of tiles, that there's a benefit to holding them in your hand because you can only lay down sets of three or more, so you might be waiting to lay down a set of four or a set of five. But if you lay down a set of three first, you can take an extra special bonus tile, which is going to help you along the way. There's lots of different, really powerful abilities that you can have access to and can manipulate the game in fun and sometimes game-breaking, or you know, the feeling of it being game-breaking in those sorts of ways. I love the scoring. I love how the scoring feels familiar to me because of my experience with King Domino, and I think there's also a lot to be said for that scoring condition, and that's why Bruno Cathala has incorporated it <laughs> into a new game, because it's exciting. Certain tiles are worth a lot more 
but only if you manage to get all the accompanying tiles with them. And so something that might seem plentiful in supply and sort of useless if you're able to just streamline and specialize in that way and get like seven hay well if those seven hay are all worth four points each that ends up being a lot of points so i like the design i like the tactical decisions that you can make in it and i like that it's by pandasaurus and that means that you're gonna get quality pieces and components the board is nice even this little bag that's used very minimally for drawing tiles is of such nice quality, a little Sobek branded on it. I find Pandasaurus has such care with their products and attention to detail and really tries to make the user experience uh, as flawless and as, as elevated as they can with things that are on a limited price point. So there's a lot of things that I really like that are going on in this. And when I first played this, like I said, I thought this would kill King Domino for me. I thought this would be the two player game that I, I go towards. I was really excited about its possibilities, but as I played more of it, that sort of shine started to fade a little for me, not completely. I still think this is a good game, but I also think that it, it may not be uh, perfect for me. And, and maybe that's just because I'm horrendous at it. I've never won this game. I've never won it once. I do not understand how to be strategic in this game, even though I'm, I'm a fairly strategic player and can usually hold my own in quite a lot of games. This game, for some reason, I, I cannot wrap my head around. And I think the key that I can't really wrap my head around is being able to take things further down the line. I am always so tunnel focused on taking the two things that the Ankh is pointing at that I don't remember ever that I can take things further down the line or I, I'm too afraid to take corruption, thinking that it'll be negatively benefiting, thinking that the effects on it will be too negative to me at the end of the game to warrant taking the corruption. Whereas my opponents usually are just taking the tiles that they want, taking lots of corruption, propelling the game forward as quickly as possible to trigger that end condition before I've even been able to assemble any sort of points or set strategy. And talking about it in that way actually gets me excited to continue to play it and to play it again. I just know that I'm really bad at it. So if you happen to find yourself in the same boat and are fairly bad when a game gives you a chance to risk and to throw away tiles and to push the game forward. And if you'd rather a game that is slower and more deliberate and easier to plan for, King Domino is easy to plan for. You know you're going to get a set number of tiles throughout the game. You are guaranteed to get that many tiles. What those tiles may be is going to be the random element, but you are guaranteed to get that amount. If you prefer that aspect of it, then I don't think you need to grab Sobek. Maybe then opt for King Domino. Maybe you don't opt for either because you are under no obligation to purchase anything just because you're looking up a review about a game. <laughs> it could also be that the more I play it, the more... I realize that the character tiles and the additional bonuses that you get for playing a set of tiles first are so powerful that they become the most important thing to race towards and that feels like it lessens a little bit of the freedom of choice, of choosing how quickly to speed the game along or choosing how to force your opponent to do something. This is also a game that really benefits people or, or I think people will enjoy if they enjoy planning ahead in multiple stages and visually mapping out how to plan ahead. If you can visually map out, okay, I'm gonna move here, then this will disappear from the board and my opponent will move here and that will disappear from the board and I can set myself up to then get this and to really th think and visualize that experience and force your opponent to do that thing, remembering that they can choose from six different tiles or five different tiles along the line and not just two, I think you might, you might also like this game. It reminds me a little bit of Patchwork in that I am also really bad at patchwork. I get decimated every time by my friend Cody. I just am incapable of seeing that far ahead in that visual manner. And specifically in a visual manner, usually in games I can plan ahead and I feel good about the plans that I'm enacting in place, but when it comes to actually physically removing things and the board state shifting, it's hard for me to, to go through those sorts of visualizations and play at a level that I want to be competitive 
with or just not get decimated entirely. But I'm not faulting Sobek for me being bad at it. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> I'm merely talking about why I am so bad at it, the actual physical experience of the game that makes me bad at it in the hopes that if you don't like those things, well then, well then you can stay away. However, that being said, in terms of my rating system, it's gonna get a seal of approval from me. I, I doubt I will encounter a game by Pandasaurus that doesn't get a seal of approval from me, to be fair, or higher. I just think even if you're not good at the game, even if you don't appreciate what's happening, even if you don't even like playing with it, they've just been killing it and all their games I feel are, are very accessible, easy to pick up and at a good price. And for those reasons, I would put Sobek for two on your radar because I've definitely had fun with it. Now, I will say that my friend Zach, who's been on this channel a few times, maybe you know him if you're a regular watcher, if you aren't, well, then you should subscribe and then you'll see him more. Uh, he's got this rating of one, five, and 10, and 10 being something that he loves, will always want to play. Five will be something that, yeah, he'll play. He, he, he might not re suggest it, but he'll play it. And one are the games that he is, that he feels no desire to ever play again. And for him, Sobek fell in that one category. He thrashed me, but it fell in the games that he wouldn't really want to play again because he is more interested in the larger experiences and the large overarching strategy games. And he felt that there wasn't enough tactical decisions here, probably because he was playing against a total dummy, to warrant wanting to pick it up repeatedly over and over again. And I can see that too. I also see that this has the potential to get a little bit repetitive in how you force your opponent to do things and how you do things yourself. And it is perhaps that repetition that I am shying away from as well. But even with that, I still think this is a good game, which is why it gets, you know, my seal of approval. Anyway, hopefully that was uh, helpful in learning about Sobek for two. If it's something that might interest you down the line, Pandasaurus always has really good sales at conventions. So if you happen to be a person who likes in and enjoys going to conventions, make sure you could probably pick this up for like, 20 bucks, 15 bucks even. I forget what it was on sale for. Uh, this was a re review copy that they that they gave to me and it was a little while ago, so I, I do forget. But keep your eyes peeled. Pandasaurus always has good sales on already really reasonably priced products. And I, I really have just such a high opinion of that company that I am happy that this game is meets the bar of what I expect their products to now be. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for liking and subscribing. My name is Chris George. I do not have a catchphrase and I've never played the original Sobek either. There was a Sobek not by the same designers. It's called Sobek and that's why they have to call this one Sobek for two because they can't just call it Sobek. And I guess the title Alligator Market was taken, which I don't think it was and would have been a better title, but you know what? Maybe they'll consult me on it next time. <laughs> anyway, see you in the next video.